We signed Morgan Moses, a guy that many Jets fans were really hoping would end up being a Jet this year. It's done, and it's a great move. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it's a great move. When he was doing his free agent tour, a lot of people were talking about contracts in the area of 6 to $8 million. Maybe I even heard some people talking about 10 which was unrealistic. But there was a price associated with a guy who has played as consistently as he has that was much higher than what we ended up getting him for. So the contract is... $3.6 million with some incentives, playing time, starting, those types of things that can get him up a little bit above $5 million. So even if he reaches all of his incentives, he's still only going to be a five and change million dollar contract. Another great deal for Mr. Joe Douglas. The guy, uh, I got to hand it to him, man. His patience and his attention to detail once again pays off for us. But let's talk about Morgan Moses for one second. A lot of people are excited. Yay, we get an offensive lineman. But there's a lot that we need to know about this guy. Number one, he came into the league in 2014 as a third round pick of the Washington football team. He was number 66 overall. An interesting little cosmic twist there. If you remember, we traded number 66 along with 86 to move up to get AVT. So the way I look at it is we just got number 66 back. So little twist for you, and I think that's fun. So he was the 66th overall pick in the 2014 draft. He started one game his rookie year. And then had uh, he suffered with Liz Frank, so he struggled with that and was put on IR his rookie year. But since then, he came back his second year, won the starting job. Interestingly, a lot of people thought Brandon Scherf was going to play right tackle, uh, and he didn't. He ended up playing the guard spot, and Morgan Moses took the right tackle spot. And he's started ever since. In 2020, he even had to go and play a couple of games at left tackle. And so it shows his versatility at the NFL level. But something else you need to know about this guy. He comes from the University of Virginia. Go Hoos. That's where he comes from. He was the starting tackle there alongside another name that you might remember. Ode Ibushi, a guy that we used the fifth round pick on and then ended up uh, not, you know, we gave up on Obushi pretty quick for whatever reason. But they were the bookend tackles for UVA at the time. He actually comes from Richmond which is pretty interesting. We know Joe Douglas's history going through Richmond University and all that. That's where he's from. And he ended up playing over at UVA and was just stellar over there. So to talk about his versatility again, he started 12 games at left tackle in college. So the guy has plenty of experience playing both tackle spots. So that's one of the things that we've seen an attention placed on with the Joe Douglas regime is guys that have the ability to play other positions. So just look at AVT as one example. AVT is a guard, but he had to play left tackle in college, did an admirable job, but a very, very good job, actually. But he's projected to play guard in the NFL, and that's where we're going to have him. But in a pinch, he can absolutely go and play over there. So now we have guys like George Fant who can play left tackle and right tackle. We have Morgan Moses who can play left tackle and right tackle. We have guys that can play center and guard. We have guys that can play guard and center. And then we have AVT who can play guard and and left tackle. So you see what we're able to do here. Now, the thing is with him, he was signed for one year, and I've, I've already caught some wind that people are kind of upset by this. They would rather have locked him up for maybe two, three, four years even. Let's end his career over here with the Jets. No, he's proven his ability to stay on the field. Like they say, the best ability is availability. Morgan Moses brings that to the table. I think it's a great thing. Number one, again, the contract numbers are 3.6 million for a one-year deal. So it's not so much a prove-it deal as, you know, a guy like Jared Davis's contract is, who I think we're going to end up re-signing anyway. But he had a, a bad couple of years. We bring him over. We, we give him a one-year prove-it deal. Morgan Moses isn't really that, in my opinion. I think what's happening with him is that you can see Joe Douglas placing a premium on building through the draft. In 2020, he used a first-round pick on Mackay Becton. In 2021, he used a first-round pick on AVT. So it shows that he's he's using his premium assets to 
bolster the offensive line. But it takes time to build through the draft. So bringing Morgan Moses in to make sure that we have as much potential to protect Zach Wilson in his rookie season is fantastic while he's still able to have that time to, number one, develop the guys that are on our roster, guys like Cameron Clark, guys like Chumi Edoga, Tristan Ho uh, Hodge, and uh, Saltez and the like. So we have guys on the roster that we don't necessarily want to count on yet, but we'd like to develop. And even if none of them do develop, Joe Douglas can always use one of his four top 64 picks in next year's draft to grab another premium offensive lineman as well. So what Morgan Moses does is it gives us the ability to take our time with the guys that are on our roster and also evaluate these guys to see if we need to use another top, uh, you know, one or first or second round pick next year. So it may end up being that Morgan Moses is so good that they extend him and that's fine. But at the bare minimum, what Joe Douglas has done once again is he's given himself flexibility with the contract. And this is something that we've seen with him. He's not building from vets down. He's not doing that. He's building from youth and the draft out. So Morgan Moses comes in. He's shown versatility, he's shown stability, availability, and he's a very, very good right tackle. So he comes in and makes sure that we have the best ability to protect our number one asset, which is Zach Wilson, while he builds the team. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Even if he does re-sign him, that's fine. The truth is, is that he, he was given the flexibility to do one or the other. It doesn't matter because he's here now. So what does that do for our offensive line? What does it do for George Fant? Is George Fant going to kick into guard? Is Morgan Moses going to kick in for guard? Here's what I see. Now, obviously, we have a lot. You know, We have training camp. We have preseason. We have potential injuries, all that sort of stuff. But I think what the plan is is this. I don't see George Fant going into guard. I don't see Morgan Moses going into guard. I think that that guard battle between... Van Roten, Feeney, Alex Lewis, and Cam Clark is going to go on as planned. And what this does is it places Morgan Moses as the starting right tackle, and it gives you a swing tackle in George Fant, who can legitimately play both sides of the line. And also, don't forget with George Fant, the little nugget that he brings with him is that he has played tight end at the NFL level, caught touchdown passes for Seattle and such. So what that does is it brings in essentially a sixth offensive lineman when we're going with our larger max protect sets and all that sort of stuff. George Fant gives us that ability to do that so he can function as a swing tackle in addition to being our, our uh, tight end in certain scenarios. So George Fant, again, adds so much flexibility, and it may even give us the ability to trim a, a roster spot or two, either losing Connor McDermott or Chuma Edoga, because George Fant can essentially take up two positions, and that would enable us to keep maybe an extra cornerback, you know, Isaiah Dunn, uh, someone like that, or maybe even a wide receiver, or uh, maybe even a tight end. So it gives us that ability to really get us down to eight offensive linemen. We're not going to go less than that because if you have eight offensive linemen on the roster, it gives you the ability to have two more game day guys uh, dress from 46 to 48. As long as eight of them are offensive linemen, we're going to be able to use George Fant to take uh, a little bit more of the weight of what we have to do on the offensive line and in the tight end spot. And that may enable us to, to really get rid of a guy like Connor McDermott with all respect to Connor McDermott, but it may, it may give us the flexibility to not have to carry him and to move on and carry some guys in other areas. So my offensive line roster prediction will look like this. Left tackle, Makai Becton. Left guard, ABT. Center is Connor McGovern. The right guard, who is going to be Greg Van Roten to start the season. Cam Clark will come in uh, mid-season, in my opinion. And then Morgan Moses will man the right tackle spot with George Fant being the swing tackle and the big tight end. And that's the way it's going to go. And that's not so bad for Mr. Zach Wilson in year one now, is it? So what do you think? Do you like the signing? Do you hate that it's a one-year deal? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, go Jets.